Hi everybody, this is Roxy, Firewife Lawyer Mom, and it is curriculum time! Today I'm going to be showing you my fourth grade curriculum that I will be using for the 2024-2025 school year. I just can't wait to show you everything that I've got, so stay tuned! Firewife Lawyer Mom, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'm really excited because it is that time of year where I will be sharing with you all of the curriculum that I'm going to be using for the 2024-2025 school year. And I really love these videos because it's such a great resource for homeschool moms and dads out there that are looking to really see what would be the best fit for their child for the school year. I remember when I was a new homeschool mom, trying to figure out what I was going to do and how I was going to plan out the homeschool year, curriculum videos were one of the best resources that I used to help me to discern what was the best curriculum to fit my child. I loved watching curriculum videos because they were just so helpful. And so I wanna pay that forward. And I've been doing that since I started my homeschool channel. In fact, my first video that I made and posted on YouTube was a curriculum video because I just felt that it was so important to really thank those who have helped me by giving back to the homeschool YouTube community here. So I'm really excited to once again, be sharing my homeschool curriculum this year for my fifth year of homeschooling, which I still can't believe that I am going into my fifth year it has been such an amazing journey such a quick journey because like the years have just passed by so fast it's giving me really such a great insight on their learning style and what they enjoy learning about and just watching that light bulb come on for them throughout the year is just such a blessing and a great blessing for me and for my husband as well so Anyways, today I'm going to be starting our curriculum videos with my fourth graders curriculum for the 2024-2025 school year. Now, one of the things that's important to know is I've already taught a fourth grader because my oldest uh, was in fourth grade before. However, my younger daughter is very, very different in her learning style than my older daughter. So the fourth grade curriculum that I'm going to be sharing is really different. So if you were to go to the fourth grade curriculum I, I shared in videos past, you'll see that a lot of the curriculum has changed. Some of it has stayed the same, but quite a bit has changed because my um, one of the great beauties of homeschooling is that you could really tailor the um, homeschooling journey to your child's learning style. And so that's one of the benefits and I take full advantage of that. Now, for um, before I turn the camera around, because I'm gonna be turning the camera to share with you guys the books, the resources, everything that we're gonna be using, um, I wanted to kind of give you a couple of just background on why this type of curriculum is what, what is working for my daughter and why I chose it. And so for fourth grade, one of the big things that for me changes from, let's say the younger elementary to now the upper elementary is that I really try in the fourth grade year to give them a lot more independence. Now, this is something that I've been working with, with my children since they're young to get them to be independent learners. But really, once they get into fourth and fifth grade, I really start to let loose on the reins of me being the, the, the hands-on teacher of every lesson to going to be more of a facilitator of their learning, kind of sitting back and helping them to be their own independent learner. And so the curriculum that I choose for starting in third grade really begins to get those reins loosened on their, uh, in you know, on, on me being the one that's just teaching all of the lessons and following up. I really try to put a lot of that independence in their hands so that they can uh, begin to be self-taught learners. Because Again, that's the goal. Eventually, they're not gonna have me when they're in college, so they're gonna have to learn to be self-taught, and so that's kind of the goal. And when I go from third grade to fourth grade, we really start to get let loose on those reins, and so um, I am going into this fourth grade year kind of 
beginning with our having just one morning meeting with my fourth grader, giving her assignments for the day, teaching a couple of lessons, but for the most part, giving her a lot more of the curriculum for her to do on her own. And you're going to, you're going to see that in the curriculum choices that I have. Now, some of the things that I just wanted to share with you, she is going to be meeting with me two hours every, for two hours, every single day where I will be teaching two subjects to her each of those days. Um, so Mondays and Wednesdays, I'm going to be teaching her religion and science. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to be teaching her grammar and social studies. So those are the four subjects that I teach her. And then I will be obviously going through all of the other subjects with her in our morning meetings for grading and following up and seeing if there are any questions or anything else on the stuff that she's learning on her own. So that's a little bit of a disclaimer as to how the year is going to be structured. So um, as you guys know, I separate everything into different categories. So today I'm going to be sharing with you um, what her morning warm up is going to be. She's going to have some time to just kind of do a few like workbooks on a loop schedule. We're going to be doing logic and critical thinking, handwriting and creative writing. We're going to be doing math language arts, reading, social studies, and religion and um, catechesis for, uh, for our faith. So those are the subject areas that she's going to be doing. And uh, a couple of things that I don't have uh, something physical to show you, but that I'm going to be doing with her is the, uh, we're going to be doing on Fridays, a creative writing workshop with JD Alvarez. And I will link everything that I'm going to be using in the description box below. So don't worry about that. Uh, she is a wonderful homeschool mom who develops her own curriculum and she's got a great writing workshop that is fairly new and we're going to be trying that this year she's also going to be trying IEW this year for the first time which is like really awesome my older daughter loves IEW and so we're going to be starting her on the first level of structure and style so I'm really excited about that um, and she's also going to be doing Nicole the Math Lady. Um, she's going to be taking on Nicole the Math Lady for her math to teach the lessons in math. And we started Nicole the Math Lady last year. I do have a video on Nicole the Math Lady and Saxon Math and why I love it so much. Uh, but she's going to be actually doing Nicole the Math Lady completely independently this year. So I won't be sitting with her to watch the videos. I more so will be there to answer questions, to help out with anything that she needs it while she learns each of the math concepts. So that's another thing that we're going to be doing. Also, uh, for fourth grade with regard to her reading, we aren't going to be doing a reading curriculum this year. So we uh, have been doing all about reading since she was in first grade and we're actually super, super caught up on our reading. She's doing fantastic. She's actually reading a few grade levels ahead at this point, thanks to all about reading and a couple other resources that I've been using, um, which I could do a separate video on, but we're not going to be doing all about reading. I think she's very proficient in reading at this point that she can just continue continue to read books and practice her comprehension and write some reports and things on the books that she reads. Some of the books that she's going to be doing this year are the classic literature series. So this is a series of books where it goes through like all of the classic literature that we had when we were kids that we learned about, like Little Women and um, uh, uh, Mark Twain's Huckleberry Finn, um, Arabian Nights, Robinson Crusoe, like all those classic literature books, which I could do a separate video on. She's going to be doing, uh, she's going to be reading those and doing some of the um, Who Was series. We're going to also be doing some Magic Treehouse books, Zoe Sassafras, other resources that I'm just going to have her be, you know, have her read one book every single month. And then she'll just write a little report and summary on what the book was about, why she liked it, etc. So that's going to be our reading curriculum. It's not going to be something structured anymore. So let me get this camera turned around because I'm sure you guys want to see what I have prepared for her fourth grade curriculum. And I will, again, will link everything in the description box below. If you have any questions on any type of curriculum, please make sure to feel free to put it in the comments and I will try to get to those comments as soon as possible. So let's get to it. All right, everybody. So let's get started with our curriculum. Now, I'm sorry for the lighting. My It's super, super cloudy here. It's been raining like every day and I've been waiting to do this video, but I just can't wait anymore. So, cause it literally rains and is cloudy all day in where we live. So 
I apologize in advance for the for the um, the lighting, but I'm doing my best. Okay, so for religion catechesis, we are going to continue on with the next series of Our Life with Jesus. This is from a publisher called Tan Books. We are a Catholic family, so we use um, our Catholic curriculum for our religion and catechesis. And so I'm going to be using the Our Life with Jesus series, and we have used it in the past, and we absolutely love it. Um, it's great. It has like tons of um, beautiful pictures and it's very colorful and the kids get to do great activities. And so that is what we are going to be using for religion. For um, writing, we are going to be going back to first language lessons. Now, first language lessons I have been using since I began homeschooling. I love this grammar program. This is actually the, te the student manual, um, and it has everything broken up into lessons. What I love about first language lessons is that it is very um, comprehensive and really teaches grammar in such a great way. Now, this I will be teaching her, so she's going to be um, with me to do these lessons. So this is one of the four subjects that I will be going over with her. Um, and it is a great curriculum. I It is from Susan Wise Bauer. It's very much in the classical um, education kind of style of homeschooling, but I really feel that it is great. Now, we also are going to be supplementing our grammar lessons with some other workbooks that I have, which I will show you in a minute but that's going to be our spine curriculum for writing. All right, so for science, I am going to be using McGraw-Hill Science, and this is my favorite curriculum for elementary science. I have tried so many different curriculums, and this is tried and true. McGraw-Hill has been around forever. Um, this is an older book. You can only find it on Amazon, used um, or like fairly new, uh, because it, I don't think it's in print anymore, but I really like it because it breaks down science lessons into like very small chunks. And I really like that because I don't wanna to have to do something where it's gonna take me an hour to teach a lesson. And so they are, their textbooks are super colorful which I absolutely love, and sorry again for the glare. Um, but what I love about it is, I'm gonna show you a lesson here. So it gives you vocabulary words. It also um, gives you a lot of great pictures. You can do some activities if you want to. We typically don't do them. We probably do like maybe one every unit. Um, but I love it because it's very, very simple. The words are big. They have um, highlighted key terms, which I like. And I go through the lesson. It usually takes me about 25 minutes. We read the lesson. And then my favorite thing is that it has... Um, My favorite thing is that at the end of each lesson, there is a think and write section where they have review questions. And so after we read the lesson and we talk about it, we I have her answer these questions as a lesson review. And then after each of the unit, after each of the units, um, so if like you finish a unit, it will have a chapter review. So what I do is I actually make a photocopy of this and then I have her answer the multiple choice questions just to make sure that she understood it. And so this is their McGraw-Hill Science. This is their fourth grade edition. You can see this on, you can find this on Amazon. I will try to link it in the description box below. It's a little bit hard to get because there's not a lot of copies out there. But again, this is for me, my favorite fourth grade science, my favorite elementary school science, because it's just basic science. It's very simplified in the way that it talks about each of the science concepts, and I just love it. And it's a general science, so it goes through all the different areas of science. For math, we're gonna be using Saxon Math 5.4. And again, I have a separate video on Saxon, how much I love it and why I think it is tried and true. Um, this is actually her uh, workbook. Um, and so as you can see, they have um, a warm-up section, and I did a separate video on this, so I'm not gonna go too much into it, but they have a warm-up se section where they do some fact practice, and then they do their new concepts. Now, she's going to be using this with Nicole, the math lady. She'll be doing the lesson practice and the mix practice, um, and then I will be grading it as I go through the Nicole, the math lady website. So that's what we're gonna be using for math. 
For writing this year for her, we're going to be using the Structure and Style Level A from IEW, and this is like my absolute favorite writing curriculum. I am an attorney and had to do a lot of writing in law school and in college, and I just love the way that Andrew Pudua teaches these lessons. I love the formula that he uses for writing, and I'm really excited because my daughter um, is going to be independent. She's going to be watching the videos creating the different writing assignments and I'm really excited to see how she will be using this curriculum um, this year. She's been watching her sister use IEW since she was in third and fourth grade and so she's like really excited to get on in the IEW club. So we're going to be doing structure and style for writing. Now for social studies this year, um, I wanted to focus on uh, a curriculum that provided a social studies and a geography kind of in one because I wanted her to uh, grasp some geography concepts of the United States. And so I found this great resource called Harcourt Social Studies. Now I searched high and low. Uh, I have used in the past other curriculums. This is a new one that we haven't used before but I looked through the book and I absolutely love the way that it is formatted and it's called Social Studies States and Regions. And so what it does is it divides the book into all the different regions of the United States and you actually study the history of those regions and the natural resources and the climate and all that kind of stuff. And I really like the way that it is laid out. This is a little of the table of contents if you wanna look at that. Um, it has a whole section at the beginning that talks about the different regions. It talks about, um, you know, how to use the textbook, how to read the lessons, but then it has this great geography review. So it talks about the five themes of geography and it goes through like all of the, um, the different ways that we study geography. We talk about looking at the earth. So I'm going to like dedicate a couple of weeks just to the introduction because there's just so many great pages that have such great information but then once you're done with that it goes into the united states so it goes into the unit the unit one and then it gives you a timeline of the people you're going to be studying in the unit maps um, and then it goes right into the lesson which is the first chapter and so again just like the mcgraw hill it's laid out very similarly and for me i need simple like i don't like making my kids like rack their brains to learn things. So I like things when they're laid out simply, the words are big, there's a lot of pictures. Like I love that for my fourth grader. And so this is the lesson for the, uh, where is the United States? And then it goes into um, a little summary at the end. And then what I love, my favorite thing is the review. I love when textbooks have this review section because then they could really go back and look at and see what they have learned. And so this is uh, one of my favorite social studies that I have found um, and you can find it on Amazon. Again, it is, I don't know if it's still in print, but it also like features certain people in, in American history. So again, it's kind of like going with, so it's kind of like social studies, history and geography, like all meshed into one, which, you know, I love all of that. So that is gonna be our book for social studies. Now for um, language arts, kind of continuing on the language arts vein, I have a few resources that I use. Plaid Phonics, I have been using Plaid Phonics since I started homeschooling. It's a great little workbook. She does a couple of pages a day and practices her phonics with this. I also give her some tests for, you know, just to make sure she learns the different phonics concepts. Um, but I don't teach this. She just literally does the pages that she needs to do. Um, for the lesson and then we go over it, you know, anything she got wrong. But Plaid Phonics is a great workbook if you just want to have kind of check off your phonics box and you don't want to have to like do a separate curriculum, this is gr a great resource. Um, I'm also going to be using Language Fundamentals and I'm going to be using Daily Grams for grammar. Now, you're probably thinking, whoa, this is a lot for grammar. Like, how are you doing all of this? Don't fret, she's going to be doing this slowly. First of all, we're gonna start with Language Fundamentals by Evan Moore, because this is like a very simplified grammar workbook where she can go through each of the grammar concepts and 
she can learn them a little bit at a time. So for example, like, and again, I'm so sorry for the glare, but for the first um, lesson, she has nouns, for example. And so it's just one page every day where they give her the definition of a noun and then she gets to practice um, with a couple of activities about nouns. And then the next day, again, she has a, the definition at the top to just reinforce it and then what examples of different nouns are and then she just goes and picks. Now I picked grade three even though she's going to be in grade four because I just wanted to be able to have her do this on her own and without me having to help her. So I always try to go with the workbooks she does independently. I do one grade below just to make it like not frustrating for her because really with grammar between third and fourth grade they're pretty much learning the same things so I figured it would be fine um, for her to do this on her own so this is a great resource if you are looking for something that kind of clicks off your grammar box this is great like again for adjectives I love how it gives you the um, definition at the top so that is really helpful for them um, especially because my daughter you know, has a little bit of some challenges with regard to focusing. So this really helps to kind of just reinforce what she's going to be doing. Now, once she is done with this, and she's going to be doing this about three times a week. So we should get through this, um, you know, probably a little more than half the year um, to get through this. But then she's also going to be working on daily grams. Now, daily grams is a, it's a workbook where they do, again, one page a day, and they just do different parts of speech, capital different grammar concepts. So we um, like kind of having mixed resources for them to be able to use because again, if she starts flying through this because it's super easy, I have daily grams to back it up so that it is uh, gonna give her a little bit more of a challenge. Um, so again, I like to mix resources. I like to do like, for example, um, I'll have her do this Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and this Tuesday, Thursday. Again, I don't require that we finish every single page other than math um, of our curriculum. And so I like to choose multiple curriculums just because you want to see how it's presented in a different way and see what clicks with them. I may drop one, I may keep one, we'll see how it goes, but this is kind of what I'm going to be using for language arts. So for spelling this year, for my fourth grader, we're going to be using Spelling UC Level D. We have been doing Spelling UC since I think she was in Level B, and she really likes it. She likes the repetition of it. Um, it's mostly, you know, you do one page a day, uh, you use, it's a really great system to help them to learn spelling. They do it by marking up their page with different like um, phonics concepts. So for example, vowel chunks, um, she will go ahead and mark them and then it has copy work. And then at the end of the week, we I dictate the paragraph that she's been working on and she does it here. And then I grade her spelling. So we, I like it. I feel like spelling you see has really helped her improve her spelling um, because it's really teaching them how to learn how to spell words words as opposed to just getting one list of 10 words every day or uh, every week memorizing that and then kind of dumping it and moving on to the next list so I like this concept my older daughter also used spelling UC and really liked it a lot as well and so that's what we're doing for that then for um, geography, I'm going back to, again, um, Daily Geography Practice by Evan Moore. This is a great resource because it's short, short geography assignments that you do throughout the week, and it teaches different um, geography concepts. And so again, I know that you guys see that there's a lot of workbooks and books, but these things take so little time to do every day that she gets through these really quickly. And so, um, and, and I love that. And it's very independent. Again, I'm fostering that independent skill for her that she's being self-taught because she's going through these workbooks and learning these different concepts. So we've used daily geography practice for a long time and we really like how it's laid out. It's 36 uh, weekly lessons. And so she usually finishes this before the end of the year okay so for phonics I also use explode the code along with the plat phonics we do explode the code I have been using explode the code forever we love it my daughter like begs to do it she does it on the weekends because she just like loves the little pictures and all the you know different things like she just she flies through these explode the code books so I'm doing four and a half and five 
Those are the two that I got for this year. A lot of times like she'll finish them really fast and then I'll have to get the next levels. But I, I love Explode the Code, especially if you have a child that like, isn't that into, you know, like concentrating and having to sit for a while. And this is like a great resource. Those lessons are very short, very simple to do, not a lot of writing. So um, I, I really love Expo the Code. She's going to be doing that as well. Now I will be showing you in a separate video how I divide all of these things for her throughout the week and how I divide it throughout the year. Because again, she doesn't do all of this in one day. She does it like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, she does certain things, Tuesday, Thursday. So we kind of um, sparse out everything. We kind of divide everything throughout the week so it's not overwhelming. Now for critical thinking, this is something she's gonna do on Fridays. So Fridays we like to focus on creative writing and critical thinking because those are, that's kind of the day of the week where we have our fun Friday family subjects. This year, we're actually going to be joining, a, uh, we're actually gonna be doing a co-op, which we are starting with some friends. And so we try to keep it very light on Fridays. So I like doing critical thinking activities for them on Fridays. So I am using Skill Sharpeners Critical Thinking and Critical Thinking for Math by Spectrum. Both of these are great companies. I love their workbooks. If you're looking for something to help your struggling math, student or uh, reading student, critical thinking um, is great for just kind of get, having that third level of thinking, that next level of thinking. Um, and so I really like it. So if you have a student that's struggling with math, for example, Spectrum is a great company. They have tons of different workbooks for addition, subtraction, um, word problems, all that kind of stuff. It's a great resource. So she'll be doing this on Fridays. Now, a couple of other resources that I will be including as well. We're gonna do vocabulary, and I use 240 vocabulary words kids need to know. It's one of my favorite resources. It's a great little book. She usually, again, finishes it before the end of the year because it only has like 27 lessons, I think. Um, and so what it is, is basically it gives you a list of 10 words. Let me get to the first lesson. Gives you a list of 10 words, and you do little activities throughout the day. So throughout the week, so she'll do like A on Monday, B on Tuesday, like I split it up and it's, and then at the end of the week, I test her on each of the vocabulary words, like just like a dictation test, nothing crazy. Um, but she loves this book too. She has been doing it since she was, I think like in second grade. So we're going to be using that for language arts as well. And a couple of other things that I have her do, I like her to do word searches. This we kind of do in the car when we're on our way to extracurricular activities. Word searches are great for kids to, uh, for spelling. They're great for visual discrimination. I just love word searches. I think they're great for kids. And so I found this resource, I've been using this for a long time. It's called Word Searches for Third Grade. They have it for like a bunch of different grade levels. And it's just words that are like, you know, third grade words and they have to find them and it's just a word search so I have her usually do this like in the car or if we're at the doctor's waiting you know she has that um, resource as well and then we also do this um, on kind of like just on the fly every once in a while we use brain quest brain quest and I get her um, the grade level for that and it just has different questions about different concepts that you learn in fourth grade and she likes this like we do a little quiz I do this in the car when we're waiting for my daughter to get out of dance or anything like that, we use these resources as well. So that's it. That's my curriculum for fourth grade. All right, everybody. So that is my fourth grade curriculum for the 2024-2025 school year. Let me know what you guys are doing. If you're using some of the curriculum that I am, I would love to hear about it. Leave it in the description. Don't forget that I will be uh, posting my curriculum videos throughout the next couple of weeks. I will be posting uh, this video plus I will be then going to my seventh grader for her curriculum, and then I'm going to be posting our family subjects along with our morning time basket and what we're gonna be using for morning time. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because you wanna be notified when a new video comes up, and I really, really love sharing my curriculum with all of you to help in this homeschool journey. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.